Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee and I'm just doing a bit of plastering in this porch and upstairs and I went down and grabbed some plasterboard and when I was grabbing the plasterboard it just it struck me how many different types of plasterboard there are now. For the DIYer this may be slightly confusing so what I thought I'd do in this video is just run through them very very quickly and tell you what they're all about. You can see this one here is a pink board. Now that is a fire board and we use that when we're going over steel beams or where you need that fire protection sometimes around the kitchen area anywhere you need fire protection this has got grp strands inside it that reinforce it so it lasts longer in a fire now the other way of protecting against fire that we used to do quite a lot was what we call double tacking where you took two pieces of half inch plasterboard 12 mil plasterboard if you like overlaid them but you made sure that the joints were staggered so you never had two joints in the same place you put one lot up and then you stagger it joints in a different place and then you skim over the whole lot not fireproofing but fire resisting a fire racing of a half hour or one hour whatever it is here's another board that's got a silver foil back it's a vapor check board if you're doing things like loft conversions and so on you want to keep the moisture out of the roof prevent interstitial condensation then you use a vapor check board you can actually do it with a polythene sheet first and then put the plasterboard up but a lot of people prefer to use this vapor check board the other thing that's great about a vapor check board is if you did have a slip tile or something like that on the roof and there was any moisture getting in it would run down the back of the vapor check board and wouldn't make a nasty stain on the ceiling having said that you'll never know that there's a leak so you can see that the vapor check board has the silver foil going round the side here that means that when you butt the other board up against it the vapor can't escape a little bit of vapor obviously will go through there but basically you made a vapor barrier there so it's important when you're putting this board up that you put it up so that you get it nice and closely butted and then of course you're probably going to skim plaster the face of the board now this is what we use back in the day we used to have a gray side for plastering and a white side for decorating now we just skim on the white side or you can do dry lining where you just tape and joint the joints in the board and you don't skim coat it at all that's a great idea if you can get all your boards cut floor to ceiling but you must use what we call a taper edge board when you do that this is actually a square edge board taper edge boards have a, a slight taper on them so when you butt the two boards together you've got a nice joint in between that you just put your your scrim tape in or your paper tape actually in this case your paper tape and then you smooth it off with a jointing filler and that makes the the joints between the boards almost invisible but not quite invisible if you look carefully on certain lights you can see the joints where you've taped and jointed in the board now the way around that is never to use a silk paint or a gloss paint on those walls always use matte emulsion on those walls and then it won't show up the joints so much so that's one trick the other thing that you do when you're taping and jointing is you give the whole thing a primer coat before you paint and that means that the jointing filler the jointing compound if you like is the same as the board because if you don't do that you prime the board up with the paint and you find that the filler drinks the paint at a different rate to the paper face and then you'll still see those little joints in the board so it's very important a lot of people don't do it but if you can prime the board first of all seal it prime it before you begin there's a special primer that you can use to do it before you begin decorating. What else have we got in plasterboards? We've got a moisture resistant plasterboard, which is green. You use that in bathrooms, not around the shower, because then you need a tile backer board for that. There are a lot of different tile backer boards you can get now, completely waterproof, and they are the ideal thing around a shower. But if you do have a bathroom, you don't want to use a tile backer throughout, you can use the moisture resistant board, the green board, on the rest of the bathroom. Very important, a lot of people use the moisture resistant board and then they go and skim coat it with the plaster and then they stick the tiles on well actually you've negated the whole point of the moisture resistant board because you've put a gypsum layer in between the moisture resistant board and the tiles and that means that the tiles can fall off if any damp gets in there so what you do with a moisture resistant board is if you do want to plaster it if you're using areas where it's not tiled and you want the skim coat of plaster you must prime that board first either with the blue grit or the green grit prime 
primer, which means that you can skim straight onto it. Or if you can't do that, give it a coat of PVA before you start plastering. Because if you plaster onto a moisture resistant board and you haven't done that, you haven't put that primer on or that adhesion layer, it will mean that it can shell off. And then you find that there's whole areas of the moisture resistant falling off. We've also got what we call DB board, which is a sound resistant board. And you use that in areas where you're obviously trying to cut down the sound. So that's very important. That's part of the building regs now. They ask you for sound resistant board in certain places, but it's also very, very useful if you've got something like a saw pipe or a loo upstairs and you're downstairs, you can hear people using the loo upstairs. In those situations and around saw pipes, if you're boxing in saw pipes, it's really good to use a soundproof board or a sound resistant board because that will cut down on the noise but you can use that anyway so we've got fire resistant board we've got sound resistant board we've got moisture resistant board and they are the main ones that you want to use and another board that you might want to use is a thermal board which is a layer of insulation laminated onto the plaster board and that gives you the extra insulation if you're lacking a little bit of insulation in the wall they sometimes ask you to use a thermal board on the inside to increase the insulation. And of course, you've got your ordinary plain square edge plaster board. It comes in two different thicknesses. Normally we use what I call a half inch board, you know, the 12 mil board, which is um, the more robust of the two. If you're using it on ceilings such as this, and you've got a 400 center, then you can get away with the lighter board, but I always go for the half inch. And just one more thing, when you finish your plasterboard job, you're going to finish up with loads of offcuts. It's inevitable. And you can't put them in a skip anymore because they don't like it. They don't like putting it in a landfill because it mixes with organic materials and lets off its horrible gas. So we try and separate the plasterboard out. We try and recycle as much as we can. A lot of it goes back to the plasterboard manufacturers and uh, your local authority might take it. But if not, just bag it up and leave it with a skip. And a lot of the time, the skip people charge it extra for getting rid of plasterboard, which is a bit of a nuisance. But there you go. That's life. That's progress. That's what we do when we try and save the planet.